name is Frank Horvat, um, composer and pianist. I'm singing here with Adrian Cohen, um, and Adrian is a supporter of my music, and we're celebrating the release of four of my albums this week. Adrian is an arts manager. She is a concert and events producer. Um, she is the owner and director of Arts and Culture Special Projects International, and she is a board member with Stand With Us Canada. Um, she is also a musician, and um, and she's a good friend of mine and a supporter of my music, so that's why it's an honor to have you here with this today. It's a privilege for me to do this. The other reason why uh, Adrian and I chatting here is so symbolic and, and so pertinent is because, really, if it wasn't for Boyana Toyich, we would have never known each other. Yes, a so, wonderful teacher and mentor. Yes, absolutely, <laughs> for, for both of us. Yes. Yeah. We know each other because um, Boyana, years ago, organized something called the Piano Monster Concert, which I think was back in 2003, if my, yes, it was. my memory serves yes, me correctly. Was. So, uh, Boyana organized this thing, and it was... I had left uh, UT, or finished my degree there, in 1997, so it had been quite a few years since I had talked to Boyana, but Boyana called me one day and said, would you like to be one of 20 pianists? to play on this piano monster concert here in Toronto at Nathan Phillips Square and in Rome, like outside the Vatican. And I said, oh yeah, I'm there for sure. So, How could you say no to that? Absolutely. Well, it's amazing. And it was, it was, amazing. It was, it was a, a great success. Such yeah. a unique, uh, once in a lifetime kind of experience. It was. Did you ever attend any of the rehearsals we had I at Remini? I did. I did. That was because I had, I had, uh, I knew, I knew the Remini people as well okay. through my work. Right. And, um, yes, I did. Have, I did come to those concerts. And Wasn't they were that a lot of fun. Like you never walk into a piano. We all love pianists. We all love to go to piano showrooms, right, and try out all the pianos. But to be in sort of this enclosed space, this showroom, with Ten pianos blaring all at the same time. It was just and all the laughter in Wow. Of course, we we use the occasion of my album releases to get together. And you told me that you've had a chance to listen to Me to We, the first album that came out yesterday. So, <laughs> any general thoughts about what you heard? Of course. Well, first of all, I want to congratulate you for for all this wonderful work that you have spent an enormous amount of time producing, uh, composing, and uh, what a challenge that you yeah. have given to yourself. And now, and now we're the benef beneficiaries of uh, all of that. Well, thank you. And um, I've, I've really enjoyed watching you through the process on Facebook because you're very, uh, very much out there and sharing all the experiences of this journey. Thank you. And uh, I've made it a point to, to watch and listen. And I'm um, very excited for you. I know you've been through some challenges in your life along the way. Thank you. Yeah. Um, and so I did listen to Me to We, and um, I read, first of all, I read your notes. And um, I don't want to sound too cliche. <laughs> no, please do. But um, I, I, I derived you know, many of the things that you verbalized in your text, um, listening to the music. And we always say music takes us to a different place. We get, we are transported. I very much so was transported um, to, to reflect, to think about not just, well obviously we all take it to our own place in our lives, but also I was going back to where you've been through your, through this oh, process. Interesting. And, uh, and knowing the two of you, and I met you together in Rome, and here for those concerts, and just reflecting on what I saw in your beautiful relationship and uh, how you work together, play together, yeah. and moving, you moved, and... Um, moved a lot. So, yeah, <laughs> and, and so, and I was very moved by the music, um, the love, was, you, could, you could hear how profound, how deep, um, deeply you shared and came out in the music, I thought it was absolutely beautiful. that uh, I sort of feel weird as a modern-day composer writing music about 
love as a concept because, like you said, it's sort of, sometimes it could just be perceived as cliche. So the composer, music geek in me, wants wants it to be musically interesting. But well, the, you're coming from your own, yeah. you're coming from your own personal place. I am, I am. But I, but there's something I wanted to be. I also I want to just share my musical voice, but I want it to be interesting in the world. But I find that sometimes I do. These aren't the only compositions where I've explored the concept of love and affection and through my musical voice. You know, but I'm always concerned in the back of my mind, yes, I want people to feel that, the emotion of it, but is it is it cheesy? You know, I mean, I sometimes wonder about question that. question yourself. Uh, exactly, you know, so so the fact that you, you didn't find it cheesy really <laughs> makes me feel better. So, well, I think, so. I think that um, for me personally, as I was starting to say before also, is that it, it took me to my places as well, in my own, in my own life, and I was able to reflect on, on many things and it brought out uh, you know, a lot of the, 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 the love that I have for things and, and the love for, that we need to have more in the world. I like to explore issues and think critically about complex things, but at the same time, like I'm, I'm a firm believer like you, that a lot of our problems in our world would just be solved if people just learn to love and open up their heart a little bit more and be compassionate to each other's ideas. I mean, a lot of that would maybe get rid of a lot of the fractured nature of our world. So I think that's why, even though a lot of my compositions tend to be gritty on, on big time issues, I think that um, I never stop writing those types of pieces. Yeah. Because they, well, they A, they reflect the personal life I lead, but but also, it's sort of like I feel deep down there's still hope for all of us, and you can't we can't give up can, hope. Cannot give up yeah. hope. Gerald Busby says, "Anyone who supports you is terrific, Frank." Oh my gosh! Well, so I'll Gerald, go with that. <laughs> so the fact that Gerald Busby saying that really touches my heart because Gerald is a composer who lives in New York City, oh, who I wonderful. befriended on social media, and um, he is an absolutely gifted composer who has the most beautiful art I've ever met of any gentleman. Oh, Gerald, so. I'll have to look you up. Other than our little uh, fun project uh, working on that, um, on the Monster concert years ago, um, Boyana bringing us together, we, we've both been very community-minded over the years. Um, well, I think we and, felt that, that uh, common connection. Absolutely. And yeah. I think that's one thing about the arts and music. Sure. Oh, sorry. <laughs> uh, arts and music have a way of connecting people that right. may not in other walks of life may not always come together but I think I was mentioning this to you before and through my work I have over the years made so many personal friends right just through working together with artists composers patrons of the arts uh, performers um, and it, it's, it's just a wonderful way of, of getting to know other people, Absolutely. people that you wouldn't normally, you know, connect with in your family or your day-to-day -day comings and goings, you know, but when you listen to, to the music you've written, um, it does cross over the genres so that people can definitely connect and relate to you. Thank you. I, I, you know what? I don't know. I, I, I love to hear that you say that, but in my more artsy, contemporary music world, you know, I know people who will never listen to Philip Glass you know, or because, you know, oh, that's just schmaltzy schlag, you know, but then... I just had a whole thing with another artist about Philip Glass the other day. Oh, really? We had all these puns going back and forth. I, I, did, a, I did a thing on um, Facebook recently where I, I said, do you like, what's, who's your, who do you like more as a player, Steve Reich or Philip, <laughs> Philip Glass? And I was shocked by the answers. So it really does show the popularity in our modern making music world of those two individuals. But it depends um, where you put that music too. Like, are you just yeah. listening to it while you're driving? Are you listening to it, um, you know, because you consciously want to listen right. to just that and you're alone somewhere? Or is, is it in the context of a film or a, or you know, an, something that's something else that's going on? So and people's answers very circumstantial. Yeah. People's answers on that post reflected exactly what you were saying. They were like, I love, I love his film music. Yeah. You know, like for Philip Glass, because he's done an incredible amount of film music. Yeah, so, so when you set it to action and, and uh, scenes, it comes a whole different kind of thing. 
Absolutely. <laughs> I'd like to thank so, you so much for coming to do this. This has thank been absolutely fa me. fabulous. Thank you so much for your kind words about the music. And of course, thank you so much for your support. If it wasn't people like Adrian, uh, artists like us cannot do what we do. So that's why it's a pleasure to have you part of this celebration for us this week. I so, wish you all the very best you. of success thank and uh, continued success.